Amidst the chaos of the world outside, the moor is the only place that makes sense. Apparently. Hello viewers, my name is Terrico and welcome to my channel where I explore, explain and expand upon the darkest worlds in video games. Today I'm taking a closer look at the moor, the original location from the first game and probably my favourite. I'm going to explain what the moor is, some of its possible inspirations, some of the metaphors and things you may have missed around the moor, and also, as always, I'm going to give my own personal interpretation of the whole thing. So what exactly is the moor? The moor is a giant metallic structure. It is one that rises out of the sea once a year, always at the same time, but never in the same place. We only see a portion of the moor in the game. We see the entrance from the outside, and we also see the top of the moor. The top of the moor is this little island structure, and when the moor is fully submerged, this is the only part that sticks out. It looks just like an island with this smokestack or chimney on top. Now, the chimney is there for a pretty obvious reason. The moor is powered by coal, and burning coal produces toxic fumes, which, if we're allowed to gather inside the moor, would kill everyone pretty quickly. So that's why it has this smokestack. The moor is absolutely gigantic, and we actually only see a small portion of it in the game. We do see in the concept art that the moor is actually much larger than we originally presumed, and it looks like it goes all the way down to the ocean floor, with these trolling nets, which makes a lot of sense since we know there's a lot of fish aboard the moor, and this is probably how it catches them. If you thought that the moor looked slightly familiar, but you could never put your finger on it, that's because a lot of Little Nightmares is inspired by Studio Ghibli movies. The moor looks very similar in a lot of ways to Howl's Moving Castle. Both of these giant mechanical moving structures, although Howl's Moving Castle stays on land and the moor goes in the water, but either way, they both have these almost facial features with the moor looking like this giant mouth, which makes sense because the moor does mean mouth. The word moor is another word for mouth or throat, although it's more often used for mouth. If you think about it, the moor of the beast means the beast's mouth, the part that swallows you, right? Which makes a lot of sense, which we'll talk about later. The interior of the moor also has large inspirations from Studio Ghibli movies, although most of these come from Spirited Away. Many of the weird and wonderful designs have been, I don't want to say copied, but at least inspired from several of the locations in Spirited Away, which is honestly pretty cool. Although, whereas Spirited Away was whimsical with a side of darkness, Little Nightmares is dark with a side of darkness in a dark source with a frosting and sprinkles of dark, just in case it wasn't quite dark enough. So the moor surfaces once a year to essentially, well, consume people. Every year the guests arrive at the moor to essentially feast. You could think of this as almost like an all-you-can-eat buffet cruise. Although we know that none of the guests ever return, and it's a little bit strange as to why these guests would willingly go there. We have a lot of explanations for this, but the most obvious one is that the lady is casting some sort of spell. The lady is the overseer of the moor. We don't know if she originally owned it. We also know that there probably used to be other ladies as well, so we don't know where they all went, but we can probably assume that it wasn't a nice happy ending for them. Now though, there is only one lady and a handful of staff that run the moor. Again, we don't know exactly why the staff run the moor, maybe they're paid, it does seem to be their job, but we know that Roger wasn't originally born here. He was a stranger and he found his way onto the moor, so it seems that like some people are being convinced to work here, maybe by pay or the promise of something else. So the guests board the moor where they are given essentially as much food as they can eat, and the guests really do love food, and it's not just like they are hungry, in fact they are described as having a never-ending hunger, they will continuously eat, and we can see that in the guests' behaviour, they just sort of cram the food into their mouth and they never stop until they sleep, which they presumably would wake up and continue, although we know that in the moor most of these guests are killed and then fed to other guests. We also know that the moor has a holding area or a prison part where children are kept captive. Now, the children do seem to be cared for. There are things in place that seem to try and make their stay more comfortable, but eventually the children are wrapped up and sent to the kitchens. Now, it's not 100% clear whether the ones that are sent to the kitchens are ones that died or whether these are ones that just gave up. We know that for some reason, children just seem to give up hope in this world. And Either way, eventually the children are sent to the kitchens where it can be presumed that they are chopped up and probably put through this machine in, made into sausages for the guests to eat. This kind of makes sense because the guests have such an insatiable hunger that they eat so much food that the moor needs every scrap of food it can get 
to satisfy these guests hunger enough for them to fall asleep so that they can be chopped up and killed and whatever else happens to them. We see from the game that there are a bunch of different areas in the moor. Like I said, there's this holding area. There are the depths where the granny lives for some reason. We have the kitchens, which are ginormous. We have the serving area where the guests eat. And then there are a bunch of different areas that seem to used to be accessible. We see a lot of them have leftover belongings, but we never see any people there. So it looks like there used to be many more people on the moor than there are now, though for whatever reason, there aren't as many as there used to be. Probably because in this world, most people just end up dead. That's probably why. So that's what the moor is. Let's talk about the more metaphorical representation or the themes of the moor, which tie in very, very well with the first game. The first game was all about hunger. Apparently I said that quite often in my last video on the hunger. Who would have thought? But we can actually draw a parallel with the moor and the guests. As I said earlier, the moor is being described as the only place that makes sense. And for a long time, I didn't really understand that. I mean, let's be honest, the moor makes absolutely no sense to me. We don't know who pilots it. We don't know why this happens. We don't know where it came from, who built it. We don't know really anything about it. None of it makes sense to me. But the more I thought about it, it actually does kind of make sense. We know that there are rules in this world, and one of those rules is that people and things get hungry. We know that animals and people, aside from some of the monsters, oh, well, that's probably a topic for another video, but all of the living things in this world get hungry. And that is just like our own world. We get hungry. Living things need to eat to survive. If you stop eating, you die. This is where the parallel between the moor and the guests comes in. The moor, just like the guests, if it stops eating, it will also die. Now, I don't mean literally eating. The moor doesn't literally eat people, arguably, but more metaphorically. If we look at the entrance of the moor, it looks like a mouth. Makes sense. It's called the moor. It looks like a mouth. But the guests actually bored the moor through this mouth, and that is a metaphorical representation that the moor is consuming them. Moreover, I actually feel like this all kind of makes sense. Think about the moor and what's in there and all of the things inside the moor that have to have come from somewhere. We see that the kitchens are fully stocked, but not just from meat, which we know some of the meat comes from weird places, but it has vegetables and fruit and things like that, which must have come from somewhere. There's no way they were grown down here because there's no sunlight, so they must have come from outside the moor. We can say the same thing for the coal. There are huge deposits of coal down in the depths of the moor. They can't have come from here. Coal is essentially fossilized trees and we find them in mines. There's no way that this was mined from inside the moor, so it must have been brought here, which probably cost something. It's not for free, right? You have to go and buy these things. So where does the money come from to buy all of these supplies? Well, pretty simply, the most simple explanation for that is that the guests are supplying the money for all of this. The guests are probably paying a fee to arrive at the moor and hell, even if they aren't, even if it was free to get onto the moor, well, they all end up dead. What happens to all of their belongings, their possession, and yes, their money? I think that the lady takes all of this and uses all of that to fund the moor so the moor can keep going. In that way, we can think about the moor as having a requirement of food too. The guests require food to live and the moor requires guests to live too. So in that way, the moor does make sense. It follows the same rules as living creatures on this planet. Even though it's not necessarily a living creature itself, it follows the same rules as a living creature. Kind of like the porcelain children in Little Nightmares 2. We don't really know how they were made or why, but they're made out of porcelain. They're not real children, but they follow the rules of real children. They act like children, they behave like children, and they have to go to school like children. Many things in the world of Little Nightmares, they are twisted versions of real things, and therefore, most things in this world have to follow some rules. So that's why we say that the more makes sense because it's feeding just like everything else. It's behaving like almost everything else in this world. Six is hungry. We don't know why, but she is. The lady is hungry. Although I've previously said she has a different type of hunger than six, she's still power hungry. Everything in this world follows the same rules and the more is no different. And that's why the more makes sense. This brings me on to another point, a point that I could probably make a whole other separate video for, but I thought I would put it in here for completeness sake. What happens to the moor after Six kills the lady? Well, quite simply, the moor's going to die. Without the lady overseeing things, guests aren't going to be drawn to the moor anymore. 
Without the guests, there is now no money for supplies, and without supplies, the staff have no reason to continue working there. They have nothing to feed any future potential guests. Quite simply put, the moor is now going to die. Once again, like everything else in this world, without a food supply, the moor will die. It follows the rules, it makes sense. So there we have it, the moor explained. The moor actually contains far more secrets within if you actually deep dive into every single room and the meanings and metaphors, but this was more of an overall explanation of the moor. We'll never fully know where the moor came from, we'll never fully know why the moor does what it does, we'll never fully know if there was a particular intended purpose for the moor. Although I do feel like we could assume that the moor is there to cull the population, to get rid of some of these hungry people who, well, let's be honest, would probably just strip the world bare of everything if they were allowed to continue eating everything. So in that way, I guess we could say that the moor does have a very solid purpose, but we don't know if that's its original intended purpose or not. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a like. Let me know down in the comments below and consider subscribing if you want to see more videos just like this one. I have been Terrico. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.